If you remember way back about a month ago, we durability tested the OnePlus 11. One month in real life feels like a year in the internet world, so it's okay if you've forgotten. I know OnePlus wishes we would. Anyway, there's a mystery hole up on top of that phone, like a drain or a vent, and I figured it was worth exploring a bit. Let's get started. Like with most of our teardowns, heat is going to be our best friend. We would hate if the back glass were to get damaged or crack during the removal. Speaking of which, I did try the old tape on glass method to try and seal up some of the cracks so my suction cup could get a grip on the situation, but it didn't work out very well. So it's back to the old brute force methods. Luckily, replacement back glass panels are already for sale on eBay and AliExpress for about 25 bucks. So there's not a huge need to salvage this one. 25 bucks is a nice little breath of fresh air, especially after swallowing Apple's $500 back glass replacements. And it's just good to know that the one part of this phone that did break during the durability test can still easily be fixed. There are 10 normal Phillips head screws up top and another eight screws holding down the bottom plastics, which can then be taken out. The bottom plastics contain the lower stereo loudspeaker, which like most other flagships these days does have the foam balls inside. These help the little speaker sound like a bigger speaker without actually increasing its footprint. The next thing to come off is a little black loincloth looking flap, which is just here to remind us where the wireless charging should be. The flash is still plugged into the motherboard with a little Lego style ribbon cable. Next we can unplug the battery, along with three other ribbons along the bottom edge of the motherboard. And then the dual cell battery can easily be removed by its integrated pull tabs. Not quite as cool as the six cells inside of the MacBook Pro, but at least it's a few grand cheaper. Each half is about 2,500 milliamp hours for a total of 5,000 and can charge at a very impressive 80 watts, getting up to 50% charged in just 10 minutes. Pretty awesome. There's an additional two screws holding down the motherboard and a few antenna wire cables. And we also get to release the 16 megapixel front facing camera. Nothing super out of the norm so far. The motherboard comes out next. It's got a solid glob of thermal place plopped right behind the processor. It's using the frame of the phone as a heatsink. The camera units also have some metallic tape on the back. Not sure if it's wrapped in a loop to keep all the cameras from jiggling around, or if the metallic tape has some grounding or thermal properties. Maybe all three. Gotta find someone smarter than me for these kind of questions. The main camera is 50 megapixels and does have OIS. Then we have the 32 megapixel 2x telephoto camera, which does not have OAS. And at the bottom we have a 48 megapixel wide angle camera, which also does not have OAS. With the motherboard gone, we finally get a closer look at the earpiece speaker. This doubles as an earpiece obviously, as well as an upper loudspeaker. And for some reason this time around, we have an extra hole up top. Most phones do have a tiny pinprick of a hole for a noise cancelling microphone, and this OnePlus does have one of those as well but the main center vent is still a curiosity. If I had to guess, it would probably be one of two things. Having too small of an output vent for sound to escape could very well damage a speaker. This top vent could be to make sure the speaker doesn't blow itself apart. Or it could be for when the phone is inside your pocket and the ringtone, which does play through both upper and lower speakers at the same time, could be projected out the top of the phone, as well as the top of your pocket. Instead of into your leg or somewhere else muffled, that vent would make the ringtone more hearable. The speaker itself does have waterproofing mesh, as well as a gasket around the outside to help keep it sealed. So this particular ingress point doesn't seem to compromise the water resistance, even though it's technically only IP64. And again, I could be wrong, this is just the opinion of but a humble phone terror downer on the internet. Finally, the lower charging port board also has one screw that needs to be removed. There's some more of that waterproofing mesh like we saw on the top speaker, but down here on the frame of the phone, where the bottom speaker vents. The bottom board has a microphone in it as well, along with the SIM card reader. The charging port is actually on a ribbon all of its own, coming down from the base of the motherboard. It does have a red rubber ring around the lip to help with water resistance. Now it's time to see if everything still works when we put it back together. Of course, I do wish the OnePlus 11 would have survived the durability test, but it is nice knowing that the part that did break is only 25 bucks and can easily be prevented from breaking with a case. OnePlus is definitely not the epic flagship killers that they once were, 
but the 11 is an improvement over the 10 and 10T, and hopefully they're able to keep navigating that upward trend. Either way though, trending up or down, I'll be here to scientifically document the progress, so hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. Everything still works. I've done this about a million times, and I still get surprised when they come back to life. Thanks done for watching. I'll see you around.